Hey, this is Eric, and this video is one in a series of videos on Google Chrome. In this video, we're looking at using incognito mode in Google Chrome. It is great that Google Chrome syncs with your account to keep track of all of your passwords and browsing history and installed extensions and more. But sometimes you don't want it to. Uh, sometimes you want to be able to use Chrome without it being tied to your account, to be anonymous, to have a blank slate, to be incognito. Thankfully, Google Chrome provides you with just that in incognito mode, which is useful in a lot of different situations. Let's take a look at how incognito mode works and look at several reasons for why we could use it. So normally when you're using Google Chrome, the browser keeps track of several things that you do. This includes your browsing history, including all of the websites that you visited, the extensions that you have installed, the auto-filled information for forms, such as passwords, payment information, addresses, and more, and finally, cookies and website data from the website you go to. All of this is designed to make your life a little easier and save you time by syncing common information that you may want to use when browsing the web. However, sometimes you may want to be able to use your browser without having all this information tracked and synced. In Google Chrome, you can do this with what is called incognito mode. Here is how it works. First, go up to the top right-hand corner of your Chrome browser and click on the three dots button. From the drop-down menu, you can now choose New Incognito Window. Now, do notice you can also use the keyboard shortcut, Control-Shift-N or Command-Shift-N if you prefer. Also, if you are using a computer that's managed by your school or your employer, it is possible that incognito mode may be blocked, and if so, it will not be available as an option in this menu. In this case, though, we do have it, so let's go ahead and click on it to open our incognito window. You can now use this window just like your normal Chrome browsing window and visit any website that you want to. Just remember a few key details about incognito mode. So first, let's talk about some of the differences. The incognito window does not know who you are. So if you go to a website that requires a login like Gmail, you will have to log in all over again. Next, if you had any Chrome extensions installed, by default, they will not be running in incognito mode. And of course, incognito mode will not save a history of where you browse or any cookies or any information that you enter into forms. Now, it is important to remember that even though your browser will not be saving anything, other systems outside of your computer may still be able to track your activity. So this could include your employer or your school or your internet service provider. Now, on the other hand, there are some things about incognito mode that are the same as normal. For example, your bookmarks will still be there, and your reading list will still be there, and anything that you download while in incognito mode will get downloaded and saved to your computer. So what might you use incognito mode for? There are quite a few situations where this mode can be useful. Let's take a look at a few. So incognito mode can be helpful if someone else needs to use your computer. Let's say a friend or family member is visiting and they want to work on one of their Google Docs. Well, instead of them sharing the file with you and then using your account or adding their account to your computer, they can just use an incognito window. Once they open up the incognito window, they can go to Google Drive or wherever they need to go and log in with their account as normal and get full access to all of their content. When they close out of the incognito window later, nothing from their account will be saved to your computer. I use this as well when I need to log into another account that I don't access often. It might be an account for a specific school or a project that I help with from time to time. 
rather than adding that account as an entirely new profile, I just fire up an incognito window when I need it and temporarily sign into the account to take care of what I need to. And the same idea can be applied to computers that are not yours. Let's say you're at a public library or you're using a friend's device. Don't risk leaving behind your account details. While you're there, simply open up an incognito window, log into your account, and then be sure to close out of the window when you are done. Another helpful use of incognito mode is to diagnose errors you're getting when online. If you're trying to use a website but getting unusual errors, one of the first things to do is open up an incognito window and then go back to the same site and try again. Because incognito mode acts as a blank slate, this is a good way to see if something connected to your account could be causing the problem. If the site works properly in incognito mode, then you might have an extension that needs to be updated or removed, or you may need to clear out the cache in your browser. This can always be a good place to start when troubleshooting online issues. In addition to testing problems with your browser, you can also use incognito mode to test issues with content that you've created and shared. So let's say you've created a Google site with lots of embedded content. When you go to view the published site, everything looks good to you. But of course, all the files are yours and you are logged in as yourself. So it does make sense that you should be able to see everything. But what will the site look like to other people? The best way to test the site is to copy the website link and then launch an incognito window, and then open the site there. In this case, we see that even though the website is shared, the Google document and the Google slideshow that were embedded were not shared themselves. So I would need to go back to the document and the slideshow, click on the share button, and properly share those files as well. By viewing this incognito, you can see what the site is going to look like for everyone else and identify and fix mistakes before you send it out. So a final use for incognito mode is to keep the record of your searching and browsing out of your history. For example, let's say you're trying to find the perfect gift for an upcoming birthday or holiday. Well, if you search with your normal account, Ads for the product may start showing up at other times or on other linked devices, which could give away the surprise to a significant other. If you search and browse while incognito, there won't be any record in your search history or your browsing history, which could influence advertisements and future searches. And of course, this same technique can be used to check out a YouTube video without having everything that creator has made suddenly start filling up your recommendations. And that's it. Incognito mode is a helpful feature in Google Chrome for accessing different accounts or using different computers, troubleshooting a wide variety of problems, and protecting your privacy in general. If you use incognito mode, I would love to hear your recommendations for how it has been helpful for you. And be sure to check out the other blog posts and videos in my series on Google Chrome to pick up more tips and helpful ideas. And for all the rest of my educational technology resources, be sure to visit my site at controlaltachieve.com, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sign up for my email newsletter and check out my book, Control Alt Achieve Rebooting Your Classroom with Creative Google Projects. Thanks so much and take care.